Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we pretty much see that all three of your major indexes, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500, all pretty much were sideways consolidation weeks for the market. What's important about that is that the market had had five straight uh, consecutive weekly gains, so we've snapped that. And we saw the, the worst selling sessions since December. The, the main negative impact sentiment that was on the market this week was the continued concern over the gridlock on whether or not Greece is going to get more bailout money. Uh, they've It has to get through their parliament, so there's going to be more debates, more uh, public sessions about it, and there's concern of whether or not they'll actually get it passed. That really weighed down on the market towards the end of the week, which again brought the week down and we snapped our weekly uh, gains. Not much going on on a corporate news, and we had a little slip here in the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment. As we look into this week, we can see that we don't have much going on in earnings. Now, we had a light week last week on economic data. Uh, just Friday's University of Michigan Consumer Seminar. You can see this week we do have a couple of things. Of course, we have the FOMC minutes on Wednesday, and even Empire State Manufacturing might have a little impact. We also have Philly Fed on Thursday, and leading indicators on Friday. So there's there's a little bit there to help uh, possibly move the market or move the dollar, and we'll see that inverse relationship with the uh, the dollar. Um, but uh, no, you know, A level, top level data uh, points unless there's some type of language change in those FMC minutes. Let's pull up the charts and take a look. Let's start by looking at our market sentiment leaders. So we're going to start with the dollar because of that inverse relationship. And we can see beautiful here, but the month of January, February have not been kind to the dollar. Trying to find a little support here at 79, trying to, hasn't successfully done it yet, but we're starting to see it based on a little bit. And again, with the uh, continued Greece debt euro concerns, maybe it's fine. This pullback could happen. It's starting to base out until probably some type of direction is given there on the euro. You might find a little safety here in the dollar. With the dollar stabilizing just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm not saying it's there. You can see that the gold, which has rebounded, has found its sideways. And again, what we told you was right here, 1760. This is where sellers found value before. This is where they're finding value now. Gold definitely sideways. Also, crude oil. Uh, it's in this range once again of 95 up to 102. And it came all the way back down. Look at that. And we've been talking about this for a while. Okay, right on down here, air kissed uh, that 95, 96 price level, and it's on its way back up. We'll see what happens if it can break 100 again. But overall, it's still sideways. Here we are looking at the S&P 500 on a daily chart. And we can really can see this sideways action, and more importantly, this Friday selling, which prevented this from being a weekly gain, which we've been talking about. We still have a beautiful uptrend that we're, we're watching here. Uh, 50 million Arabs ultimately being the support before I was really start to question this uptrend. But again, we see a sideways action, and we said this last week because last week, or this current week, we didn't really have any economic data, we didn't have really earnings. So there was no catalyst to move us, especially when you think about how we were at such a key price level um, 
uh, there was no catalyst to keep us moving higher and higher. So this next week, as we said, there still isn't a lot of going on on a on a news front. So we'll see what happens. We know that our indicators all are overbought, and we see we're getting a sell signal here on stochastics. So on our daily, definitely overbought. We'll scroll out to the weekly. Zoom in a little bit. See our first little red candle in here. Look at all these green candles. Uh, again, Doji at a key resistance point. Uh, that definitely could be indecision, definitely could be a reversal, but at the same time, it could just be a pause. Our weekly indicators are definitely overbought also. Um, a little bit more room up on the RSI, but for the most part, overbought on a weekly. And let's see what our monthly says. Zooming in here. Uh, well, our February candle is still nice, uh, but we are starting to get into that overbought level. We're not quite overbought yet on a monthly but we're starting to get there. So uh, weekly, daily, pretty much overbought, monthly heading there. Now we'll switch this down back to the daily. Come on over here to the NASDAQ. Zoom on in. We can see how we're in new highs here. You can see a little gap down that we had here. Still nice uptrend, 50 moving average, still in place here. And we can see that gap down on Friday. Our indicators overbought, overbought, just like the S&P 500, the daily. So CAC is giving us a single for the down move. A weekly, zooming in here. Overbought on Stochastics, just about overbought RSI, overbought here on MACD, just about getting ready to roll over here also. So definitely starting to see the market pausing and looking for what is catalyst. Again, what's going to be catalyst to keep this market moving higher? doesn't mean that bullish move is over. It just means the market is pausing to gather itself. And there we still see a nice bullish candle here on February. Uh, but our, And just like the S&P 500, our monthly indicators still have room to go higher. Uh, so we have uh, a conflict. We do not have dual time for agreement. We like to match the daily and the monthly. Um, and we don't have that quite yet. Let's see what our market leaders are saying about the market. All right, we're starting off with the daily chart of Apple. And I want to get your hopes up. I mean, obviously, beautiful chart here on Apple. Um, blowout earnings, gap up, base a little bit. Once it broke its high, took off even further. Um, as the rumors and the confirmations of the IP3, iPad 3 announcement and, and release date coming, definitely some selling the news here once it actually is released. Look at all these green. <laughs> Even if you don't know what they are, just see them. <laughs> um, and the reason I say I don't want to get your hopes up is this is it. Apple is our one true bullish, um, uh, definitely bullish uh, chart. And then we're going to start seeing some consolidation on the other ones here. So here's Amazon in a big downtrend here. Found its support here at the 500. Came up, retested 197 and got back down here on earnings and now it's just kind of going sideways. So Amazon right now for me is sideways. Google has a little disappointing earnings. You can see that drop off there. Made its way back up here to 620. 620 held up as resistance. Now it's kind of going sideways. So uh, Google right now, I'm going to say sideways until it breaks 620. Then I'll, I'll start thinking about sideways up. Probably could draw a downtrend line that we might be breaking here. Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs lives once again. Zoom in here. And what's nice about this one, even though I'm going to say sideways, this one we would say sideways to up. We can see the market uh, pausing here. Um, look at this doji at the 200 moving average this indecision. Um, but at least we see this nice move up here in January, continuation of that move at the beginning of February, but now we got a sideways move uh, this week. Sideways up for Goldman Sachs. IBM also sitting at resistance at this point now because we're consolidating there once again. I am going to go ahead and draw this 195 uh line in there and let's zoom in and you can see how this high here is 
still our resistance definitely a, a bunch of sideways price action in here so sideways maybe sideways up for IBM but sideways Intel um, sitting here at 27 sitting here at 27 sideways to up on this one also if we break 26 here I will look for it to come all the way back down here to 25 Let's try to remember. Mastercard. Mastercard's not that bad. Almost as good as well. I won't say almost as good as Apple. Well, almost as good as Apple. Uh, definitely broke out above 383. Uh, pull back a little bit, but we got more of a bull's candle here on Friday. Let's say Mastercard is up. So we got pretty much sideways, sideways up here from our leaders. Uh, moving on to Netflix. Netflix has found itself. Uh, found that support here in the 60s. Now it's struggling at 130. So definitely sideways, sideways up there on Netflix. So if we can get a catalyst moving on the price line, we can see the market moving higher. But there's also reason to believe that you see all of these stocks sitting here at their resistance price level. So if we don't break these resistance, resistance of all of these, then we can start to see the market move down. Sideways here on price line, but we know that 550, 555 is hard resistance. As we come to our education spotlight, we continue to talk about the emotional side of trading. And uh, you can take it to the bank. You're going to have a slump. Remember, the key to trading is having a trading system, a trading plan, where we allow, we're able to, through back testing, have positive expectancy knowing that over time we're going to win, but there's going to be a time where we hit a slump. It happens in baseball, it happens in basketball, it happens to the best of athletes, and in this case, our trading. And you have to be prepared to deal with that losing, you know, because um, what happens is that some people lose and then they just quit, or some people lose and they blow out their accounts. So you have to be able to know what to do. Um, do you need, has the market conditions changed? Do you need to change your setups, your criteria to match the current climate? Are you following your training plan to the letter? Um, you know, these little adjustments, you know, uh, baseball, do you need to step closer to the plate? Do you need to step closer to um, the pitcher? Basketball, do I need to release higher? Do I need to uh, higher my projection, lower my projection? Uh, football, you know, do I need to change my release point? Do I need to catch the ball with my hands and not let it get to my body? All these little adjustments you can do in sports, you need to be able to do that in trading. As you hit a losing slump, make sure again that the conditions haven't changed in the market, that you need to change your criteria, and make sure you truly are following your plan to the T. Please like, comment, subscribe, uh, let us know what you think. And you know about our resources, our video courses, our mentorship, how we can help you develop that trader's mindset so that you can handle those losing um, times. Um, a, a really affordable, high probability trading course, $29. It has all the information. You see three things there. Introduction to trading, technical analysis, chart patterns, money management, another video on trading plan components, how to take those introductions and form them into a criteria and then some advanced training setups. For those of you who would rather uh, allow our expertise work on your behalf, we do have managed Forex accounts, full transparencies, individualized trading plan. Check out that link there and you'll see a video that really explains it all. And if no matter you're on a PC or Mac, we have tried and practice to find at least breaking stocks. But in the end, you know there's going to be a loss. You know there's going to be troubled times. You know there's going to be times when your system's not working as great as it could. Do you st still have the psychological capital to pull the trigger on each and every trade? That's what we can do through our mentor program, help you develop that mindset to be the best trader you can be. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.